Ah, I like you turn. Ooh, that's a nice feeling with you need. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm just cruising down the mountain. Straighten the knee. Straighten back so far your knee's straight. Back even further. There it is. There. Pull your foot back at the top enough where your your foot's behind your hip. That pulling the foot back takes outside three foot. movements. Yeah, that's it. That you have to coach out. Yeah. Totally, doesn't hip it? It simplifies out. the crap. It, like, we need to do this at the beginning of the season for us before U10. It, like, threw my whole pro carving progression out of the window. All, all the way out. This is changing. It's like I'm, I'm spinning in my head. How to, it makes it so much easier to teach. I'm not sure I can do that on my own these little guys. Because it's too light. But if, there, if it's packed... We had and they have good wax, yeah. But the yeah. trick there, though, is just to make sure, you know, they don't have to turn much. It's just no, no. learning how to stay at the, yeah, that edge established. And then, I haven't been on like a fresh I mean, <coughs> I'm already seeing in my head like three or four the runs. Don't do anything. Yeah. Just what food are you? Pull that hip back as far, uh, pull that foot back as yep. far as you yeah. can. No. And then <laughs> no. do it in a fluid bicycle-like motion, right? Just this Where's your brother? foot to foot, back yeah. and forth. He's training. And just do that for lap yeah. after lap. Here. And I feel like at some point, somebody somebody's edge will catch. Yeah, oh, and once you feel it, then it's like you, you give them that gift of being able to play the set. Yeah. Like you get fewer cues. Because yeah. in, in kind of the PSI progression nonsense, there's too many there's, there's too many cues that have to be given. Bend your ankle, tip your knees, hip, hips up, you know, knees and nose over. To, this takes all of that out. It all took me the whole month I was in Europe, I was like, I denied it. I was like, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. This doesn't work. How do you start your turn? You don't. But then I but did it. The ski does. What's, I did it, and I'm like, holy crap. Yeah, the ski does it. No, what's cool, too, is like when you pull your foot back, you cannot physically get in a more hip positive position. You can't get your hip up anymore, or you don't need to get your hip anywhere. And you can start that from a low position. So, why, so you get yeah. forward maintaining a pretty low position. That's what yeah, confuses never, everybody, because they look at a skier like Odermont, or some of them that look like they're really crouched in transition, and they... or. And then, uh, but they actually get really tall right as the, as the hill. Cause so when you're traversing, it says, and then you go into the turn, it's as if you're going over a breakover. Yeah. And so they're just pulling that back and getting into a really tall position, but it doesn't look tall. No. Cause they don't really go up. They just You can go take out. out things like flex. Everybody sits in the back seat, right? You, you, there's so yeah. many things I'm thinking in my head I can just eliminate in language. No, just pull your foot back. Pull, pull it straight back. Just do that. And it bends the ankle. It puts pressure on that ski. It engages the edge. Bring, like you said, brings that hip up. In all with one right direction. Way. Huh? It brings your hip up in the right way. In the way. right, yeah. I didn't think of that part, but I know it brings your hip up. It's good. It, it, I think the hardest part is, I mean, once you get your outside foot pulled back, the hardest is pulling your inside foot back as well. Yeah, you don't want, I mean, that would be the biggest danger with these kids is letting them get super divergent. But um, I think you cue that. I think you talk about that later. Uh, I'd yeah, much rather have yeah, a clean yeah, ski yeah. initially. Oh, honey. Because uh, divergence is way different if you have both feet forward with divergence. That's a way different thing than divergence with the back. Because right. you can't 
be that divergent in transition with right. that foot back. Yep. And the, you have to do the dynamic move to the next turn. So you're switching in the transition. The, the discussion, I think, sorry, I'm just trying to, re, I'm, no, trying to play, cool. I'm trying to script this in my head as I see these kids, like the group I had this year, like what would they, how would they respond to this? What am I seeing in their scheme that needs to be reviewed? And it might just be cleaning up that, this movement, right? Like not really make your skis wider or narrower. Just don't worry about that. It's like, no, bring that foot further back. And then pedal through and bring the other foot further back. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to no, put it's cool. script up in my head. Watching these guys that can carve, what's Is interesting. That Is that Graves? Yeah, On Telegear? No. Who was that? Matt Graves. Oh. So what's interesting though, like that's why I wanted came in to get that footage of me because I filmed him from the side. You very rarely see footage from the side. Yeah. And like, so we were watching some Hersher free ski and slalom. And it's amazing. Like all he does, the only move he does is just pull that outside foot back like four inches versus not. Instead of rolling the knees, anything, he just goes, he just goes like this. And then it just goes, phew, and then, phew. and what was so cool about Cayman is he wasn't doing it because I just watched Hersher in his slalom. And in that, I was like a little further back. It changed your skiing a hundred percent. It's it was faster. <laughs> it's just he's the energy out of the turn was insane. Well, the thing that you can also do is like if you're just straight running down a really flat pitch, is you pull your one foot back further than the other, and you actually just turn. You don't. That's have to what do we're talking anything. about a mile with the U10. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> don't, and that's that's yeah. what you're trying to do at full speed. You actually don't need any kink. Or any. Trying to get them to self-discover that. That's the key, right? It's that self-discovery. Once they feel it, trying to get them to repeat it. Yeah. From the side. Pull that foot back. Pull it back even further. Hersher had it even back further. There. That's Hersher. There it is. There it is. Even further, there. That's it. Whoa. Yeah. Different, isn't it? That, oh, that's... you did it finally at the end. Did you see how quick you snapped out of that turn? So we just had Cayman doing what we were watching Hersher do this morning on video. That worked. Okay, Cayman, what do we need to work on after seeing our last run? Well, like you got the top of the turn with the outrigger, and then once you... Oh, okay. It's way too professional. Now there's too much pressure. Yeah, no, I'm not going to be able to do it. But once you carve the top, and then you get into the middle, you just equal your knee, knee angles, and then you'll be able to drive. So you'll hook, you'll be able to start the lunge and your hips are in front of your feet, preferably, and you're in the carve. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing would be is you just bring this foot that's supporting you down. And it actually just goes right to where it should be. If you're truly carving this outside, you just let this one yeah, come there. Or you, you, or you put it to your boot. That's one thing I found at high speed if I'm trying to do that wide stance lunge, it's super dangerous. I almost caught my, almost did the splits. Like I was like, I don't need to do that in a high speed again. And that's only really if you want to hand drag too. If you want to get to that progression of just angulation. Cause you, you'll never be able to hand drag. So guess my point like with this. my statement was, I just, what I learned the hard way there was like, I can only do that in slow speed. Yeah. And, well, it's, and it's not something I want to demo at high speed. When I caught both that just was like, whoa. Great for, for the kids too. Not not what I'm talking about, but the outrigger. Because I mean, you, in, in, if you're always trying to just do this, there's no support, and you end up just sliding until the bottom. Yeah. Where if you do the out in rigger, yeah, in rigger, then you then you actually carve the top, and then that then oh. you trust it. So the so it's this psychological thing where you're actually carving the hardest thing you can do with support. And then eventually, once you trust that ski and it carves, then you just put it here. And then you hand drag it. But you have the... Sign up for a fist race. Have all the things that you need to do. 
yeah, did anybody feel the top of the turn with, with us trying that? It it works. Like, you can't stiff it. You like carved that. it. You were carving the top of the turn. Mm -hmm. You were doing good. Yeah. I thought it's saw everybody thing, do. Though. It's hard to You're, You got a, a bad stivet. <laughs> Need some practice. Jim's skin good. Your skin good. It's like the hardest thing in skiing. So it's the top of the turn. Yeah, yeah. it's not like it you, you're just going to. Well, I mean, with this drill, you just do it. You know, one thing we notice with like the U8s and the U10s is they naturally do that anyways. As they start playing with their skis, they, they stay on that and they, they actually just create a trigger yeah. because they don't want to fall to the inside. So they actually, when they're learning to carve, it's really natural for them. So I think if you exaggerate it with them and you have them really get it, I think that at least what I saw this season, like with the kids, is not having them tip both skis. If they keep this one flat, because a lot of times they'll carve them, but they'll, this one will still be on a toe, and then they're not as angulated, but when they keep this one flat, it forces them to create that angle at the, and then they actually really start to to get that, feel that ski like progressively edge versus when they're like this, it kind of, it doesn't get as high edge angle. Well, that's all also from just trying to pull that foot as far as you can back. Back. Okay. Then but even without up, pulling back, the kids it, do it naturally. Yeah, if you just go like out, it won't ever hook up. Okay. But if you put it behind you, then it will. Okay. It's a weird. I don't. But Luke did that. Remember, he had like a big wide snow plow, and then he yeah. instantly went to carving. Yeah. So it's basically the in rigger drill. Yeah. And they don't get nervous about how they look with the wide stance. They just just do it. I'm hoping um, on this flatter train we'll be able to kind of link those together without that speed. That was, I got going too. It was hard. I get too fast, too hard. It's like I, mean, I didn't like my wide. I like my wider skis, but not in that situation. I wanted, I wanted really <laughs> narrow underfoot for that. Just gets too unstable. What are your favorite free ski skis? Oh, I ski on a, a GS uh, 165-17. So he's got this cool thing. He takes his old, like, U14, U12 GS? Yeah, or like U14. And that's what he free skis on. You should see what he can do on him. Holy crap. It's a cool, I'd never really thought of that, but, like, it'd be fun to take a 165 GS ski because I love the 165-14 meter slalom. But I want to try it, like, make a 165 GS. I'm about to try those. They're nice, and they're soft enough to do moguls. Broken them in and out. Well, if you watch his video, like I watched his they video this it. morning, but it's subtle and it's not the primary focus. So, my, so that's kind of my take from Europe. It's more like my take added to Tom's video. He's right. he's more angulated and, and just rolling of the knees than I remembered watching his video this morning. Right. Where the Europeans do that. So it's not, it's not, that's not a Tom part of but it. No, I, I, I know that. But what I'm saying is for training purposes to put that in there after they start to get that move and then add it. I yeah. wonder if it's easier to add it or to just have them do it right off the bat. I think do it right off the bat. Right off the bat. Yeah, I, I agree. The way we do it, there's like three movements, you right? Film this, this, stuff. and this. Where this is one movement and then everything happens. So yeah, so the story with Kelly, right? And we just haven't been on a flat enough pitch. It's, right. a, it's just the way the morning worked. So I would go up to like Flintlock or something super fun. Mile is great. So Kelly, my wife, haven't had her carve the top of a turn, like could not do it. Rolling the knees, no, none of that worked. Wide stance down Mile, it's just like pull this foot back. Pull this foot. Now she's like just linking turns. So I would, I, I would not wait. I would just do it on, a, on the appropriate flatter tray. That makes sense. Because my wife did the same thing. <coughs> 
on the on the catwalks, I said I want you to try this by pushing that back there. Yeah. Same thing happened. She goes, I don't know if that's right or not, but it sure does turn my skis. That's so. I mean, that's, that's what's cool about it. It's like it yeah, does, cool. does it, and then once you start building that angle and shortening this leg, it's like. That was awesome. For me anyway, it feels like a much stronger turn without a lot of force. Exactly. Yeah. I'm curious to see the video. No one ever films me. How'd I look, Cameron? You look good. Did I look good? Hollywood. Huh? Call Hollywood? I didn't look, I look better than Cayman, right? No. No? <laughs> well, Jim, do you want to come down here for a second? Well, what Jim reminded me is last time we did the in-rigger drill, we didn't take it to the next step which was the top of the turn so what did it's and it's a lot about having faith in it and it's the hardest part because you're literally shortening that new inside ski downhill so it's hard so you're in this traverse and you're coming across you've got angulation like this you know if you're in rigor like this you got to come all the way up and then at this point you're trusting that you're going to shorten this inside new inside leg even though it's downhill But why this is good for you, Jim, is because it, you cannot stiv at the top of the turn. In this position, you have to have faith. So, I mean, this is kind of a, <laughs> this is kind of a short traverse, but I'm going to see if I can do it. Mm -hmm. You have to then match your inside edge angle. Yeah, so that's the next step. Drive. Yeah. It's like you can't hand drive quite yet if you're in this position. Which is a great position, but eventually you just get to there. And then well, then you got, yeah, they, it's, it's the next drive. step. Yeah, so that hand drag is just one more level. How'd I look? Did I look okay? Yeah. It felt good, it's fast. Huh? It feels good, it's fast. It I thought that was you. Felt right. So did well, since you're here and there's a couple well, Amy's down there, we'll go find her. She had to get her pass. But we'll kind of go through the whole progression. And uh, what we've been doing is Rather than creating edge angle with the knees, it's with the pulling this ankle back with a nice tall vertical edge angle. And then what that allows us to do, and then also, and then bringing this up. But 
but the progression is to create this edge angle, pull this back, and then just shorten this leg with this called the inrigger. So we're gonna do a J turn doing that first. Do you want me to demo it? The trick to it on a flat surface, as we learned last time, is you have to have a really wide stance for it to work. Because if you're just rocking down a cat track, for example, you pull this leg back, you're just standing there like telemark. But if you pull this leg back here, you create edge angle. So you, it's like start with an unusually wide stance. So, The wider, wider, wider. There you go. You could have started with a little wider. He just turns in his sleep. Wow, that's weird. That works. So just a wide stand. Pull that leg back. Yep, pull it back. There you go. You were you saw that carve there. Kind of fun. We could pull it back a lot. This, we need a wider run to really feel it. I think... There you go. Hey, Matthew, I think we'll go down to like the eight came and just like give us a hundred yards above that and stop, but show us your hand drag carving. Here, you want to follow him? He's going to do hand drag until we stop and we'll do it across the flat to Vogue. Because ultimately today I want to get to where we're actually hand dragging. You're going to just, here, give me your pull. So remember that video we watched? No. Huh? No. <clears throat> so what I want you to show us is like carving where you're like in this position where you can touch the ground. Can you touch the ground? So, so for you, that's kind of what we, we don't want to reach for it by collapsing. Uh, okay. Because if we're reaching down just like this isn't going to get us there. We're, we want to get there with edge angle. So if we stand here <coughs> and do the in rigger, just stationary like this, come way out here and then you can touch. And then when you're skiing, this will just come to here. So this is kind of like our guide. You know? So the reason I wanted to stop here is because we have this long flat and I wanted to do kind of the in-rigger drill and then as you build speed, you can morph into carved turns with the hand drag. Can you show us that, Cayman? You should write your GS because you're too, too quick. Well, we'll just watch you ski, and then I'll show the in-rigger drill. In-rigger to what? With this, yeah. This isn't really a hand drag pitch, you know. What's hard to do about the in-rigger is if you're used to pulling that foot up behind you in the inside foot. You don't really need to do it, but it's kind of cool. So for Jen, this is a perfect pitch. So just like a straight run. Crazy clean edge. As weird as the form looks, it's crazy what it does for your skiing. Yeah, it's insane. I can tell I'm not cold enough in my boots. Like I'm not <coughs> but you're carving this clean ski. What were we saying, Kim? Oh, just matching. She's just not used to rolling the top up. 
I saw some, some, some of that you were carving the top. Okay. You're just not used to that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How'd that feel? That looked good. I mean, once you're hooked up, you don't have to put the in-rigger out. You know what I mean? Here's my other son. Hey, wait. Can you show us? Can you, t well, let's go to the knoll here and we can watch him. Okay, so we're ultimately trying to hand drag. We're being really cool. Can you show us some hand drag? Get enough angulation in your turn to touch your hand, your bucket, your pull bucket. Well, this slalom radius. He's doing it. Okay, just like that. Got it? <laughs> Matthew's just like, okay. Okay, came and show us. Should we do that or should we do the progression? How are you guys feeling? The traverse? Because what in his drill with nobody here, it's kind of safe. I don't see anybody. So let's do the traverse to the hand drag first, right? So it's like J turn, so I think with straight run came in until I progressively start turning and see if you can get low enough that you're touching your hand. All the way to the other side, ideally, but your slalom skis, you'll do a circle by then. <laughs> That's kind of cool. You want anyone else want to try? Let's see it, Jim. So just make sure it's clean. So you didn't start clean. So the, the, hey Jim, just make sure you start clean. Be more patient. This, assume that position and just wait for the ski to build. Instead of the stivet, we're watching. We're, so just, there you go. Right? Yeah. See, there he did it. Let's see. So for him, the in-rigger, he's a little too forward. He needs to just be more inside. Yeah, so try to keep this leg straight. And then just like without the poles, it's nice. We can go right to this knee to elbow. It's okay, kind of a really cool, like, 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 that's kind of a cool mechanical lock. If I can do that, I'm doing it. Yeah, well, you're okay. at the right kind of positioning. Okay. Give it a little straight run. And yeah. yeah. Well, that was the you're recording. So what I want you to film is me from the side to try to get just, so what we were talking about on the lift is just the difference between rolling up the edge here versus here. Like, this much is so different and you can feel it. So I'm pretend I'm coming into the top of that turn there, right? So I'm in transition in European, we call it neutral. It's like pull that back and then shorten this. And the difference is like, this would be how I used to do it. Now it's this and it's just so much more powerful. You can feel it in your boot, but that's like all it is. Can you follow me from the side? I'm gonna try it. That was the best I've ever seen a person feel their good feet. <laughs> that was legit skiing, wasn't it? Oh my god. That's taunt, pull that inside knee back. 
So the inside knee back is a ski instructor thing. And I could see you struggling with that quandary. Yeah. So what I would do is like, rather than like pull, the hip a lot when I well, and what I want you to do is rather than pull the inside foot back, pull, you stack and jack as well. So you're like, you're here and you're like, don't know what to do. Just go up, yeah. up and forward with the knee, keep the ankle back, but the knee up. So okay. I think people get confused with holding this foot back, which is great with a ski instructor turn where you're never out of this world. But when you're at this high edge angle, it's up here. Yeah. So you can keep this foot back, but the knee has the effect of feeling forward because it's up in your face. Yeah, I've been experimenting a lot with that. Because I found when I wanted to get like higher edge angle, I just have a wider stance. So it doesn't even have to be... So when you're inclinated as much as you are, that foot will swing right up to your other knee. Yeah. And that's okay. Exactly. Exactly. So, so visually, try to touch that inside edge to that outside knee. And don't let that foot come forward of, say, your rear binding. Yeah. So it's like your rear binding. And ideally, you're, when you're really in it, you want to feel it pulling it back at the same time. Yeah. There you go. That was good. Yeah. 